All narcissists follow a pattern that consists of idealization, also known as love bombing, followed by devaluation, followed by discard. This cycle repeats over and over throughout the relationship until you leave the narcissist for good or they discard you for a new victim. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lisa and in this video, I'm going to address what love bombing looks like and how to recognize when you're being love bombed. Now, most new relationships start out with a feeling of hopeful anticipation and getting to know this new person. Everything is new, it's fun, it's exciting, it's energizing, and it feels good when the new person that you're getting to know feels so in sync with you. You feel like you can talk with them about anything. You can open up with them and be vulnerable with them with your thoughts, with your feelings and your emotions. You feel like you're building a strong foundation for a healthy long-term or even lifetime relationship. And all of this feels good. It feels wonderful except when it's not, except when it's not real, except when it's just part of the cycle of abuse. Now, love bombing can feel like the real thing. That's why narcissists use this tactic. They can't abuse you if they can't get you to fall for them. So they put more energy and effort into this phase of the relationship more than any other phase. The narcissist's intention is to draw you in through their love bombing, which is actually their manipulation tactic. And this is done so they can bring you under their control and control over you is their goal. So some signs of love bombing, they compliment you frequently. They may say things such as, I love everything about you. I've never met anyone as perfect for me as you are. You're the only person I want to spend time with. I've never felt this way about anyone ever before in my life. Now, if you're hearing things like this very early on in the relationship, potentially this is a red flag. Now, while these phrases are not in and of themselves red flags, if you've just started dating, if you've known them for less than a month or two, and they're professing their love this strongly, chances are they've idealized you and they've placed you on a pedestal. I mean, they don't know you well enough yet to know if they love everything about you. Also, they may bombard you with very frequent phone calls and text messages. They want to be in constant communication. They want to know everything about your day, what you're doing, where you're going, and who you're with. They may call or text very early in the morning or very late in the evening or both. They may contact you frequently throughout the day. They're already testing your boundaries here. They want to see how much of your time they can control. They also want to be the priority in your life. And if they can keep you on the phone or texting all day throughout the day, they know they're gaining momentum. So something to keep in mind here is true love does not want all of your time and all of your energy focused on them alone. When someone really loves you, they respect the other commitments you may have in your life and your ideas and your boundaries. Another sign you're probably being love bombed is they try to convince you that you're soulmates. This is a big one and it's used frequently by narcissists, especially narcissists who try to appear spiritual or religious. They may say things like, we were born to be together. It was destiny. It's fate that we met. You understand me more than anyone else has ever understood me. We're soulmates are my narc's personal favorite. We've been soulmates in all of our past lives. Yeah. Narcissists who employ using the soulmate trap are most likely to target those who are spiritual or religious. They know they can use that person's belief system to their advantage. So if you're a person who has a strong belief in destiny, fate, soulmates, twin flames, this can be especially enticing. You may believe that a higher power brought the two of you together, and that can be intoxicating for the victim. 
my narc ex-husband used this spe this specific tactic on his girlfriend before me. He used it on me, and he's currently using it on the new supply. Because once they find a tactic that works, they stick with it. Now, they may also love bomb you by showering you with gifts, which makes them appear very loving, kind, and generous. Now, once they begin to devalue you, the generosity and the gifts dissipate and they may go away all they may go away altogether or they may use gift giving as a way to reel you back in if they feel you're beginning to pull away another love bombing tactic that they use is pushing for a commitment very early on they may want to move in together very quickly and the thing to keep in mind here is that real relationships take time to develop it's very unlikely that the person really can love you more than anything in the world in two weeks or two days or two hours or even two months. My narc ex told me he loved me on the very first date and within two weeks he was wanting me to move with him out of state. Now another sign you may be being love bomb is everything seems too good to be true. If this person seems so perfect that your gut is telling you this can't be true, you need to go with that instinct. Genuine, authentic people still have flaws and they still have problems, and they're usually pretty open about their shortcomings. Narcissistic love bombers, on the other hand, work extra hard to keep up the charade of perfection in the beginning. Remember, the narcissist is never accountable and they don't accept blame. They project and deflect their bad behavior onto others. Listen to how they speak of their past relationships. This is one of the most telling things of all. If they place the blame on their former partners for the failure of those relationships, this should definitely be seen as a gigantic flashing red flag. Now, it's certainly possible to have had a terrible past relationship after all, you certainly did if you were ever involved with a narcissist, but when every previous relationship failed and it was always their partner's fault, this is a warning sign that should not be ignored. It's also a huge hint that lets you know one day you will be the horrible ex in the story they tell to the next supply. Ultimately, what makes love bombing so scary is that it can be really, really hard to discern whether a new partner is genuinely head over heels for you or whether all of their affectionate, seemingly loving behaviors are really love bombs in disguise. Love bombing is ultimately inauthentic and it is manipulative. Your brain gets hooked on the highs of the attention. So once the abuse and the controlling behavior begin, you're less likely to recognize it and to act on it. Plus, all your partner has to do is throw out a few more love bombs and you're more likely to forgive and forget. So the best, best method is to watch for the signs of love bombing at the beginning so you can cut that person off before you get sucked in by their manipulation. So how do you figure out the difference between someone showing genuine love and affection and the narcissist love bombing? Set a boundary. Healthy people expect boundaries and they respect them. So if they're calling too early in the morning or too late in the evening, try letting them know that. If you tell them you don't like taking calls before 9 a.m. or you don't like taking calls after 9 p.m. because you need your rest for work, a healthy person will understand this. The narcissist, however, will not. They wanna be your number one priority in life and setting a boundary like this will cause them to pout or to be irritated in some way. They may even withdraw from you and the relationship temporarily or even permanently if they see you're gonna to be too hard for them to control and it's gonna to take too much effort for them to ensnare you. You can also try disagreeing with them over something small, something easy. It could be very simple, something like expressing a difference of opinion, but in some way challenge them and watch their reaction. Healthy individuals don't expect you to agree with everything they say and they don't expect you to like everything they like. Narcissists do. They see their victims 
as extensions of themselves. So they expect you to see things the way they see things. They expect you to like what they like. And they actually feel wounded by you if you don't agree with them. So watch how they react when you disagree with something they say. Now, another thing you can do is offer constructive criticism and see how they respond to that. Narcissists cannot accept any form of criticism, even when it's given with kindness and compassion, even when it comes from a place of truly wanting to help them. My narcx used to give talks at spiritual centers, which is ironic since there's nothing spiritual about him. <laughs> However, during these talks, it was obvious he was losing the audience because he would tell personal story after personal story. He'd go off on all these tangents and he had no idea he was losing their attention. Now I noticed this and so did several, several other people. So I suggested he utilize a script with some bullet points to help keep him on track and to, you know, help him keep the audience's interest. He did not appreciate this suggestion to say the least. <laughs> so even though he wasn't getting larger audiences, they were becoming smaller all the time. And even though most people who came to these events never returned for future events, he couldn't see what was happening. And he lectured me on how well he could read an audience when, when it was painfully obvious that he couldn't. Narcissists think everyone is interested in them and whatever they have to say. The way they respond to gentle, constructive criticism will tell you a lot about them. And if they respond to that, with irritation or anger, that's a huge red flag. And someone who's rushing to lock down the relationship is more than likely love bombing you. They want you deeply invested in that relationship so you won't leave when they start their devaluation and their abuse. Now, infatuation can happen very quickly in any relationship and that's normal. But when someone is overwhelming you with their attention, with gifts and professions of undying love very quickly, you have to question their motives. This person doesn't know you well yet and you don't know them well either. So ask yourself, what is missing from their life that they're throwing themselves into a romantic attachment so quickly? If they just came out of a relationship or even worse, they're overlapping their current relationship while starting a relationship with you and they're professing their love and devotion to you during this time, you need to run. They're using you as a band-aid to soothe them and they're love bombing others at the same time. Narcissists are notorious pathological liars, and they will always have multiple people waiting in the wings that they're stringing along in case things don't work out with you. Even if they move in with you, or you move in with them, even if they marry you, you will never, ever be the only one. And just know, once the love bombing ends and the devaluation begins, they are busy love bombing someone else. Even if you're doing everything they say they want, even if you're being everything they say they want, it will never be enough. You could be as close to perfection as any human could ever be, and they will still seek and entertain new supply. This is their pattern, and it will repeat throughout their life. Now, I hope you have found this information helpful, and if so, please like and subscribe so you'll be alerted each time I upload a new video, and share this with others who may benefit from this content. Thank you all so much for listening, and may your day be blessed.